be in Italy, be one here. Aurora is open. Uh, I, no, now they, they get Aurora in Italy on red side. Aurora in Italy again. Huh. But you do have to give up Rumble, and Rumble is extraordinarily powerful. But this is what happens, and this is what I was saying. They actually just banned the same champions that they did on blue side and said, yeah, that's fine. You just have whatever's left, and we'll pick all the other cool stuff. And I think that they may as well. And Aurora is a possibility for the top side as well, guys, obviously. Um, but it's likely that that's going to go once, at, once again into the hands of Bulldog. I they really maximize the amount of time to have a discussion. Even in the game that Bulldog like got a substantial deficit in the laning phase, he's still carried in oh, yeah. fights. I think this guy right now is looking like just straight up our best Aurora. And giving it to him again when the pick is so clearly so insanely valuable is a gigantic gambit. And as, as we have repeated many a time, T1, if they end up losing here, not going to be eliminated or anything crazy like that. But it is going to make their life harder. And if they lose here against Kwangdong, then that series against BNK gets uh, even more pressure added on top of it. And there are a lot of other factors, but... Yeah. Because it's going to Nidalee again, Atlas. Yeah, he, uh, he's 9-0 and zero, uh, currently on the Nidalee. Uh, it, we were talking a lot about you know, the Rakan that was also very, very good for Andal and the Tristana for Bulldog. Those, like, the Tristana was banned. That is certainly good news. Okay. The Vi cool. is going to get through. That will be the answer uh, to Cuz this time around. I think gives them a bit more firepower and also holds people on equalizers, which is going to feel fantastic. I like Vi Ari, Vi LeBlanc. Yeah, I feel like either of those options don't sound too bad to me. Or they could just lock down a like high priority AD carry, like a Kaisa fits into this composition very well. I, I would love an Azrael personally, just for being playable into Aurora. Not right. going to be the case. It's going to be the Azir. Not going to make me super excited when it comes to uh, pure pick power, but obviously the comfort for Faker. Azir buffs are going to hit on the next patch. That's a Lucian. Yeah, we don't really know. Uh, there is, of course, an opportunity here for the Aurora to go towards Dudu. We have seen that played in that matchup, but it looks like Dusante making oh an appearance. Again. Yeah, I'm not feeling too psyched about the, the Zaya option. I imagine that it could certainly be a possibility. Good the carrier. They have really liked it. I wouldn't mind the uh, Kaisa just in the composition, but maybe not as much with the Azir. Yeah. Let's just see what uh, Leaper is going to take away. It looks like it might just be MF for him. And that is going to deny what Gumushi played in the last game. He doesn't have to worry about being put in a circle. And he can actually lay a Raccoon on top of it. That's going to feel pretty good. Guma just thinks maybe I just stand really, really far away. That works. I'm, yeah? Like, that's honestly not, bad, not too bad of a solution. So you can either try to go mega aggressive, right? Try to go and dive together with the Vi. Or you can take... Yep, Whoa! So, so what? That's... That's what? Varus. We have not seen a Varus in a good amount of time, everyone. That champion has not been at the um, forefront of the matter. He's also receiving some pretty... Uh, I think it's on the next patch that he receives buff. Might have been on this one, because they basically did like a kind of a mini rework. Yeah, little, uh, the little mini rework did happen on this patch, where okay. they... Like, yeah. uh, just changed around where a bunch of his numbers went. I don't ex exactly know where that kind of left the Varus because we just haven't seen it, guys. Uh, Andal is thinking about the horse pants, and of course we do know that Bullet Time and the uh, and the Magnet Storm are very powerful. It is exactly what Gumi Ishikaria played in the last game. And Kwanong Freaks, pretty well-rounded draft here, I have to say, but T1 this time around with a lot more power picks under their belt. I also really like Equalizer and the Chains of Corruption because you can really lock someone down. And with the fact that they have a Vi for guaranteed lockdown and a Nautilus for guaranteed lockdown, beginning these Wombo combos is not going to look nearly as hard as it did in the first game. And that was something that the space brought up as well. I do agree with that, but I also think that a lot of that CC... And bring us to the final game of the series. Let's do it. Top of the rip right now. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. And now I'd like to take you on a journey, because what we were going to, to say is we were getting ready to celebrate T1 qualifying for the playoffs. With a victory here 
in this series. That is precisely what would happen. However, we are now heading down a darker timeline. As a oh, Leaper, oh. he doesn't know, does have flash. Well, let's see. Andal very far away from this one as Make It Rain does connect. They get the flash out, but there's the crash down. That's going to get the flash as well out of Gumiushi. So an even trade there. Squanong Freaks retain, uh, you know, some control on this wave. And now oh, it is going Andale. to be a little bit of respite as Ona. Wait, Cuz. Ona gets spotted here. Again. Cuz, oh god. I've Again? Seen We've seen this timeline before as Cuz gets in. He's not able to steal it away, but Ona is now in trouble. Carrier inside the pit. Kumiyushi trying to get rid of Leaper here. The spear is going to miss. Bulldog comes down, puts them in a circle, and that is going to be two swift kills. Fink are going to go down as well, though, and the Aurora is on the board. And we're going to be cantering over, or is that more of a trot? Looks like more. That's a canter. There we go. Uh, that's going to be Carrier connecting to the wall. There's bullet time, and is he just dead? He is. Cuz going to come on over, pounces on down. Now looking for Gumiyushi. Spear not going to connect, but they've got a huge minion wave. Gum has to get out of here. He's going to miss all of that CS. Oh no, is he going to yeah. miss his life? No, he's not. Uh, Will, uh, fortunately for him, hold on to that. But Kwangdong, that's what we said. The moment you start falling behind this bot lane, continued attention towards it. Carrier doesn't have flash. That's an easy punish. And the goal goes down to that previous fight at the drain. Man, I wish just so more Nassus is... Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Okay. There's the all out into the wall. Andil's going to come on over. Doesn't even need to press any buttons yet. As the equalizer goes down and doesn't do too much. And Kumiyushi had almost gotten here. Wait. Oh, does have Chains of Corruption. And Dudu might actually stick around. Oh, there it is. He's going to charge this one up as Dudu, he gets the shield, he flashes. Is the Ignite going to be enough? Because he's going to turn up in the Primal Surge. Oh, Andal's also going to survive this one as crashes to get the shield. Kwandong Freaks can do no wrong this game. What is going on? Oh, Atlas, that is a tilter right there. Oh, they're still looking for more, though. Not out of the woods just yet, as there is Ona making his way in with that Vault Breaker. Cease and Assist is going to connect it. Andal goes down, and T1 not standing for these shenanigans. For a All second. Right. Oh, Faker's in a circle. Bulldog doesn't find the Q. Does manage to get some of the other abilities, but the Q's the oh, most important man. one. If he gets the Q with the Execute, that would have been the end yep. of the uh, Make sure that they actually get something towards the top side now. A kill for Guma, kill for Owner. And they're still behind in gold, but without it, I think the game would not have been technically over, but would have been in a really rough spot. They still are going to have to find a way to deal with Bulldog, though, because he is again getting plates, Malignant is ready, and that early kill has really accelerated him. Yep, Owner looking to try and pay Dudu a visit, and then OTP. possibly head over uh, for some grubs as Carrier's turning up as well. That is going to be the CC layering. Dudu is very tanky, though, as Ona gets himself out from underneath the turret. Carrier not going to get pulled back by that Q3. And Dudu is still here. Clearing out some minions. Cuz wants to be able to deny the six stack of the grubs. But I don't know whether he's going to be able to. Oh. I don't think he's going to risk it. So the big thing here is that uh, Dudu has to TP bot to catch this wave. Otherwise, Zayus is just going to get free plates. But Zayus still has TP. So now there's the threat. If Kwong look over invest into an uh, into a attempt to deny these grubs, they might get punished. You see Zayus as well. Look at his positioning. Well, we'll see whether uh, they can actually yes. clear something out. As uh, Leaper and Andal are going to move up. Uh, that's Carrier going in. Finds the knockup on the Leaper. Decent assist comes in as well. It's decent layering as the bullet time comes through as well. But Gumiushi's going to survive it. Cuz throws a spear to Narnia. And he's not going to be able to pick up anything. That is just the bottom lane dead. He you might, are dead. He might be in trouble unless he does yeah. some pretty extraordinarily cool alcove things. As... He is going to try and use the equalize, but unfortunately, he is in a circle and he is not getting out. Did do a lot of damage there to Cuz, but he has the ability to heal himself back up. His owner is going to return the favor by uh, taking down Shelly on the top side of the map. How does Rel get that kill? And on vision, Quanon Freaks don't really need to worry about it as they're going to go in. Circle does go down. Bulldog immediately turned on and exploded. And he'll find the decent Magnet Storm, but they're still not able to find any kills at all. T1 will wipe them out in this fight. And Dudu is just trying to flash for his life. There is an outer turret here. But Kuz and Leepa are out of this one, and T1 can go for a dragon if they'd like one. That is going to be the dragon, and I think T1 might be looking for a dive as well. Faker's pushing the way. Yep, Dudu is going to turn up, trying to push them back in here. There's the all out on Zayus, and Harpoon 
with the help of uh, Piercing Arrow, is going to be able to take him down. Faker is finally going to turn up, find some Sand Soldiers to deal with this misfortune. And because he knows that he's dead, he's going to see whether he can take Zayus with him. The answer is no, but at least he gets a flash. But T1, they'll also get a turret and the first Mountain Drake of the game. I guess they, they, they can move around in the barrel. And yeah. Quantum Creek's players were moving around underneath their turret, so... Sure, whichever, whichever metaphor you prefer. Yeah, it's fine with either. Really big win there for T1. Now building up a 4.5 or a almost 4.5k gold lead. We also have the Mountain Drake going to Demiseus. He is going to get crashed into. Nice Spear is going to connect there from Kuz, who does make his way down. Gumiyushi is also dead because uh, Bulldog has the ability to put him in a circle. And immediately, Quanon Freaks are going to fire back against T1. They might even be able to well, get some good damage on this outer turret. Yeah, I'm like. Go to Nash. There's no Nash. We're 80 minutes in the game. This is an absolute bloodbath. Yeah. And just, I think, like us with our conversation about Apple, but keeping your flash absolutely pivotal. Looks like he will be going for that wit set next. Mid lane turret's still going to fall, so that alone not enough to bring Kwangdong fully back into the game, but it does show. Can't underestimate this team, Atlas. They're still looking. Oh, that is going to be some vision taken out here. Shattering Strike going to be avoided with that Vault Breaker as T1 gets some Banana Brush control. Spear almost connecting onto one of the wings oh, of the Dragon here as Bulldog. He needs to make his way over. I don't know if it's going to be in time. I think this Dragon is gone. It's more about can they find the fight? Yeah, they do manage to get on top of Bulldog who just puts a circle in the wrong direction. Equalizer also just sitting in the middle of nowhere as the Drake is still getting amongst it. But that is just going to be the kill onto Andal. It was in no man's land, unable to do anything. Still somehow Quantum Freaks are the ones with control of this Drake and Cuz is over the wall, so he's not going to be able to get a smite in there. It is going to be the Dragon secured here by T1, but can Quantum Freaks keep themselves alive in the fight? As Spear connects on Gumiyushi, but there is no follow-up. And Kwondong just couldn't really decide what to do. They will be able to find that little hit onto Ona, who goes down exceptionally low, seems hey. to be said, for Bulldog as Gumiushi gets in there. He is going to sacrifice himself as Empress Divide will take down Dudu, and Ona is still alive. That's an ace, because Andal was already dead from before. Leaper basically pre-firing, that can work, but you can't have that play and, it, and not be coordinated. And then from that point on, Zayas is just roasting them on the other end of the fight. Baron in the picture and picture has been taken. Atlas in this final week of playoffs. We are going on day one to a game number three. Yep. I have final a week of layoff to playoffs. Yep. Um, it's also going to be possibly the first loss for Cuz's Nidalee so far this season, which True. is uh, kind of crazy thing to think about because of course, uh, Quantum Freaks are sitting at a very even game score. <laughs> so her there's been quite a few losses in that column, just none of them have been the Kitty Cat Lady. Turn onto someone of T1, so we have Stopwatch for Zayas, we have the Banshees as Oguma. Bulldog is going to put uh, Bulldog into a circle and just take him down. Empress Divide is going to come on through, but Faker is also dead. That is Leaper falling as well though, and you cannot cross the veil when there is an anchor coming from Carrier still. Spear's not going to connect, Andal not tanky enough, and T1 just have enough firepower with the members that they had left. That's Equalizer to help them take down Bulldog, and Owner is just a carry in his own right. He's 6 0 4 on this buy, and so I guess they don't need their damage dealers. I'm doing air quotes right now because they've got Owner. They've got this Rumble as well, who does so much work, and Carrier can keep them in place. That is one heck of a way to reach a thousand kills, as Owner is just going to come in and take the team fight into his own hands. I, I really thought that I was going to talk about all the defense. Most likely that T1 is going to be able to pick up the Mountain Soul here. Yeah, Spear is going to break the shield on Faker. He's standing on a ward. Doesn't really matter. They're going to be able to take this in a turret. And the rotations should be pretty comfortable if they'd like to just make sure that mid wave is shoved in. Get the Quandong Freaks as far away from this Drake pit as possible. Get themselves a Mountain Soul. And then that would be absurd. That is going to be the Chains of Corruption absorbed. And now Bulldog's going to do it again. He bounces to the other side and the other side. And then Kamushi's going to get out of there. Does use both of his summoners, though. As now Dudu Wait. thinks he may have found an opportunity as Ona. He goes in. They're going to turn the fight on its head. But Ona's the first one to go down. There is the T1 follow-up. As Zayas, the walking barbecue, is going to be able to clear them all out. And so Ona's dead. But then he's got the rest of his mates to take care of it. 
Yumayushi also staying alive in that one, making great use of his flash, and we are going to a game number three here, Atlas. Yeah, we definitely are. That is going to be the first Nexus turret going down. Carrier is going to also bring Nautilus out of his losing streak. The man was definitely underwater when it comes to being able to win and is finally going to pop his way out on the shores of Bilgewater today and bring T1 to game number three against the Quantum Freak.